In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at how we can find R1 for a circuit given minimal information, and just what are the differences in R1 and R2 in ring and radial circuits. We've had several requests from people that are taking electrical assessments, and one of their questions asked, how can I work out R1 if I only have R1 plus R2 for a circuit? In this video, we will use as examples a radial circuit and a ring circuit that are both the same length and both use the same standard twin and earth cable. In the examples, the phase and neutral are both 2.5mm copper and the earth or CPC is 1.5mm copper. When we measured R1 plus R2 for the radial circuit, we had a resistance value of 0 0.4 ohms. And for the ring circuit, the same length, the same size cable, the resistance was just 0 0.1 ohms. So, is there a formula that can be used to calculate the resistance values of the single conductors when we only know the value of them when they are combined? We must begin by understanding the naming convention that we will use in this video. And this is also important for exams and assessments. Using the wrong terminology may cost you points in an exam. There are two live conductors, line and neutral, since both carry electrical current in normal operation. The line conductor can also be called the phase conductor, but it should not be called the live. We also have the CPC conductor, the circuit protective conductor. The conductor in the cable should not be called the earth, as there is only one earth in the property, the main earth to the consumer unit. The line can also be called little r1. The CPC is little r2, and the neutral can be called little rn. Why little and not big? Big r1 plus r2 is the effective resistance of the circuit and may not be the actual resistance of the conductors. It is the resistance or impedance that the electricity sees, and this is different for radial and ring circuits. How they are connected makes a big difference to the effective resistance of the circuit, but little r1, little r2, etc. are the actual end-to-end -end resistances of each conductor, and they are unchanging. If we measure or calculate big r1 plus r2 in a radial circuit, we are measuring a series resistance. R1 is in series with R2, and the effective resistance will increase as the two conductor resistances add together. However, when we measure or calculate big R1 plus R2 in a ring circuit, we are measuring a parallel resistance. Little r1 is in parallel with little r2, and the effective resistance decreases, it becomes smaller. Let's begin with a radial circuit where we will find that little r1 and little r2 are the same as big r1 plus big r2. To find big r1 plus r2, we link the line and CPC at the consumer unit and measure for low ohms at the furthest point. This measures the end-to-end -end resistances of the line conductor through the link and back along the CPC conductor. This gives us little r1 plus little r2. As this is a radial circuit, big R1 plus big R2 is the same as little R1 plus little R2. In other words, for a radial circuit, the effective resistance is the same as the actual resistance. R1 plus R2 is a series resistance. For a radial circuit, if we know the resistance value of R1 plus R2, and we want to find R1 on its own or R2 on its own, we must use a calculation based on the ratio of the conductor sizes. We must understand that the resistance of a conductor is inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. In other words, the bigger the conductor size, the lower the resistance, since there is more copper to carry the current. And if the conductor size decreases, then the resistance value will increase. Let's work out an example. Let's calculate R1 and R2 for the given radial circuit. We are using 2.5 by 1.5 twin and earth 
installed in a radial circuit with a measured R1 plus R2 of 0 0.4 ohms. To start, we must determine how many halves there are in each conductor. The line conductor is 2.5 CSA and this can also be written as 5 halves, 5 over 2. And the CPC is 1.5 mm CSA which can be written as 3 halves or 3 over 2. Here we have 5 over 2 and 3 over 2. We will first of all swap the top numbers and then we will add the top numbers together and swap these for the bottom numbers. All will make sense on the next slide. So, swap the tops. The 5 for the line goes onto the CPC side. And the 3 for the CPC crosses onto the line side. Now add the two top numbers. In this case, 3 plus 5 is 8. Then put the number 8 on the bottom of each fraction to give us 3 over 8 on the line side and 5 over 8 on the CPC side. These are called the multiplier fractions. Now we can calculate the values of R1 and R2 as separate resistances. We already know that the effective resistance is 0 0.4 ohms, so the rest is easy. For the line, 3 eighths of 0 0.4 is 0 0.15 ohms. And for the CPC, 5 eighths of 0 0.4 is 0 0.25 ohms. If we add the two results together, we are back to 0 0.4 ohms, as we would expect. R1 is the line, the biggest CSA, and this has the smaller resistance. And the CPC, R2, has a smaller size or cross-sectional area and should have the bigger resistance. As this is a radial circuit, little r1 plus little r2 is the same as big R1 plus big R2. We can look at another radial circuit example. Let this be a cooker circuit that is wired in 6mm by 2.5mm twin and earth. We've measured R1 plus R2 and this is 0 0.34 ohms. Calculate little r1 and little r2 as separate values. Begin by calculating the halves in each conductor size. The line is 6 millimetres, so it can be written as 12 over 2. 12 halves make 6. The CPC is 2.5 millimetre, and this can be written as 5 over 2. Now swap the tops. 5 goes to the line side, and 12 goes to the CPC side. Then add the tops. 12 plus 5 is 17, so put 17 on the bottom of each fraction. 5 over 17, and 12 over 17 are the multiplier fractions. Let's do the calculations now for this cooker cable. For the line, 5 times 0 0.34 and divided by 17 is 0 0.1 ohms. This is R1. For the CPC, 12 times 0 0.34 and divided by 17 is 0 0.24 ohms and this is little r2. Follow the method and it is an easy and accurate calculation. We can look at ring circuits now, and here we will find that little r1 plus little r2 are not the same as big r1 plus big r2. This is so important with ring circuits. In a ring circuit, we can measure the end-to-end -end resistance of the line, this is little r1, and we can measure end-to-end -end on the CPC to give us the little r2 resistance. The neutral end-to-end -end resistance is called little rn. Little r1 is the end-to-end -end of the brown line conductor as shown here and giving a resistance of 0 0.15 ohms. Little r2 is the end-to-end -end of the CPC and this is showing a resistance of 0 0.25 ohms in this example. Now this is where things are different for a ring circuit. Big r1 plus r2 is not the same as little r1 plus r2. Big r1 is not the same as little r1. Big r2 is not the same as little r2. In a ring circuit, r1 plus r2 is a parallel resistance. In a ring circuit, we can have big r1 plus r2. We can have little r1 on its own and little r2 on its own. We can also have little r1 
plus little R2 added together. But we cannot have big R1 on its own, nor big R2 on its own. In a ring circuit, they cannot exist as separate numbers because they are an effective resistance, not actual. Let's look first at how we get big R1 plus big R2. R1 plus R2 is calculated by adding together little r1 and little r2 and then dividing by 4. A ring circuit is a parallel circuit. So we have, in this example, little r1 of 0 0.15 ohms and little r2 of 0 0.25 ohms. 0 0.15 plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.4. And if we divide this by 4, we have an effective resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. Big R1 plus R2 for this circuit is 0 0.1 ohms. The question now is, can we find little r1 and little r2, the end-to-end -end resistances, from the big R1 plus R2 value? How can we work everything backwards? We must first find the multiplier fractions for the line and CPC conductors by following the same process as before. Because we are using 2.5 and 1.5 conductors, we must convert them into halves, with 5 over 2 and 3 over 2. As before, swap the top numbers so that 3 goes on the line side and 5 on the CPC side. Now add the tops. 5 plus 3 is 8, and put 8 on the bottom to make the fractions. We have 3 over 8 for the 2.5 line, and 5 over 8 for the 1.5 CPC. Now we must find the number to use for the calculation. We need to find little r1 plus little r2. Because we divided little r1 plus little r2 by 4 to find big r1 plus r2, we must multiply by 4 to reverse the process. So multiply 0 0.1 by 4, and we have the number 0 0.4 to use in the calculation. Now we can proceed as before. 3 times 0 0.4 divided by 8 is 0 0.15 ohms for little r1, the line conductor. And 5 times 0 0.4 divided by 8 is 0 0.25 ohms for the CPC conductor. Note that these resistances are little r1 and little r2 only. This is a ring circuit and they are not big r1 or big R2. We can do another example of a ring circuit using 4mm by 1.5mm twin and earth cable. R1 plus R2 was measured at 0 0.165 ohms and we've been asked to calculate little R1 and little R2. There are three steps to follow. Find the multiplier fractions for the line and CPC conductors, then multiply R1 plus R2 by 4 to give the starting number, which is little r1 plus r2. Finally, multiply little r1 plus r2 by the multiplier fractions. This will give r1 and it will give r2, the end-to-end -end resistances. There are 8 halves in 4 and 3 halves in 1.5. Swap the 8 and 3 to the opposite sides. Add the top numbers, so 8 plus 3 equals 11. Now put the 11 on the bottom of the fractions and we should have 3 over 11 for the line fraction and 8 over 11 for the CPC fraction. Next, we take big R1 plus R2 and multiply by 4. So 0 0.165 multiplied by 4 is 0 0.66 ohms. This is little r1 plus little r2. We now have everything we need to complete the calculation. Multiply the numbers out to find little r1 on its own and little r2 on its own. Little r1 is 3 times 0 0.66 divided by 11, which is 0 0.18 ohms. And for little r2, we have 8 times 0 0.66 divided by 11 and an answer of 0 0.48 ohms. Take the time to understand what we've done with the calculations in this video. Once understood, they are a powerful tool for your mental toolbox. Little r1 is the end-to-end -end resistance of the line conductor. Little r2 is the end-to-end -end resistance of the CPC conductor. 
and little rn is the end-to-end -end resistance of the neutral conductor. In a radial circuit, R1 plus R2 is a series resistance circuit and it has the same value as little r1 plus r2. For a ring circuit, r1 plus r2 is a parallel resistance, which means that big r1 plus r2 and little r1 plus r2 are not the same. And to find big r1 plus r2 in a ring circuit, we must divide little r1 plus r2 by 4. To reverse the process, if we only know r1 plus r2, calculate the multiplier fractions depending on conductor CSA. For a radial circuit, multiply R1 plus R2 by the multiplier fractions. This will give you R1 and R2, which are the same as big R1 and big R2. The actual and effective are the same. With a ring circuit, calculate the multiplier fractions. Then multiply the measured or given R1 plus R2 by 4 to find little R1 plus little R2. Now multiply little r1 plus r2 by the multiplier fractions. This will give the separate little r1 and r2 values, the end-to-end -end resistances of the line and CPC. Note that big r1 and big r2 cannot exist on their own in a ring circuit. They come as a pair and cannot be separated. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.